What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing the past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. And this is the healing technique that we've now been teaching it, well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com and don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. The comments and views expressed on The More Show are those of the people that make them and do not necessarily reflect the view of Kevin Moore, The More Show, or this radio station and its affiliate or sponsors. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Broadcasting from the UK and across the world online, you're now watching the UK's only alternative late night talk show. And I'm your host, Kevin Moore. For the next hour, I'll be covering subjects that will open up your mind and provide you with information you may have never heard before. On today's show, I'm joined with Jason Quitt, who will discuss his latest book, Forbidden Knowledge, Revelations of a Multidimensional Time Traveler. Now, Jason Quitt is a graduate of the Institute of Energy Wellness and a student of shamanism. Jason has been training and working with many teachers, shamans, and traditional healers from around the world. And what makes Jason's testimony even more fascinating is his statement of being an interdimensional time traveler. Jason Quitt, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. People watching this at home will have no idea just what we've been through just to get this to happen right now. Um... I am so appreciative to, that, that we're able to do this. We have, this was an interview for two people. This was with Bob and yourself. So unfortunately, uh, we couldn't get Bob on the show due to technical issues, uh, my end completely as well. Um, but just, uh, there's, there's, there's so much to cover in, in, in this interview. There really is, this is a fascinating story. Um, just tell us Bob's involvement with this, um, with, with yourself as well. Um, and how, how you met Bob as well. Sure. Um, well, a friend of mine named Joanne Eady, um, she put on a show called the Alien Cosmic Expo, which was held in Brantford, Ontario uh, last year. And she asked me to be um, a guest speaker. And I usually speak in uh, different conventions where it has to do with health or Qigong or energy medicine. So, you know, going to an alien expo was really kind of out of my element, but not really as I found out. <laughs> and right when I walk in the door, I see um, a gentleman sitting right in the lobby, and he had a big poster of his latest book, which was called Intrusion, Alien Encounters. And on the cover, there was a mantis being. And I've seen this being a couple of times in my life, so when I saw this uh, image, I walked up to the table and I looked down at this image and um, I just told the gentleman there that uh, this looks exactly like the being that I've seen. It's a very good drawing of this mantis being. 
and that was Bob Mitchell. So that was my first introduction with, was with him, just uh, walking up to him and checking out his booth. And um, later I found out that um, many people have told him about me, and he came to see my lecture that day. And in my lecture, I started to talk about um, pre-birth memories, past life, um, different spiritual concepts. And he was very interested in my story. So um, at the end of that talk, he came up to me and said, uh, you know, I'd really like to work with you and, and maybe possibly write a book with you. And I said, sure. So it was actually quite a very easy uh, meeting with Bob. But, you know, I never really wanted to tell my story. <laughs> I never really wanted to share um, these stories publicly. But before this conference, um, I became very sick, and it was almost like I was dying. If not, I was dying. And I was just thinking that, you know, I really needed to share my story. So right when I thought, you know, I'm going to tell my story, suddenly I have um, Bob Mitchell shaking my hand saying he wants to write the story with me. So it just worked perfectly in synchronicity with the universe. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I just wanted to get that in there because obviously, you know, um, I would have loved to have got Bob on the show today with yourself, um, just to even just to you know guide this interview a little bit. Um, now, this is going. This is this is really interesting. This is uh, in the sense of there's a uh, there's so much to what you do. I th I feel that has not been covered in some interviews, and one of those aspects is. Let, let's just start at the beginning here, where, where this, where this, where this sort of started for you, in a sense. To start off with, um, were you into any met metaphysical subjects, uh, and if so, what what sort of authors were inspiring you, as well? Um, truthfully, I wasn't into any of this. Um, I wasn't reading any books on metaphysics. I wasn't meditating. Um, this was a natural ability that started, I would say, pre-birth. And it started to open up throughout my life. And I just thought it was completely normal. I thought everybody had these things. Um, like, I remember even growing up and having uh, past life memories come back to me. And, you know, I would tell people about them. And people would just say they're just dreams or they're just nightmares. And everybody has those. So you kind of stop talking about them because you think that, you know, they, this is make-believe or this is just dreams. Um, but it wasn't until, I would say, my early 20s, about uh, 22 years old, that I had uh, quite a big awakening that completely flipped my life over. Okay. Okay. Now, now, prior to that awakening, um, in your introduction, it, it, it does talk about that you had been on a spiritual quest, in a sense. So there was something there. Is that spiritual quest, you know, as in shaman, looking at shaman and uh, shamanistic um, teachings as well, and other things? Was that prior? Was that sorry? Was that after having your first sort of uh, interdimensional travel, in a sense? Yes, uh, that came um, after I first had those awakenings in my early 20s. Okay, now take us to that first event that happened to you. Okay, so um, I started to have uh, problems with a condition called sleep paralysis. And that means I'd be sleeping and I'd wake up and I'd be fully aware and conscious, but my body would be completely frozen in bed and I would be unable to move or scream or do anything. So basically, you're like in a coma, and you're just yelling in your head to wake up. And this happened uh, continually to me. Um, when these uh, occurrences happened, I could actually feel that the, I wasn't alone in my room. I could feel something walk into my room, and then suddenly my body would be frozen. And so, you know, your mind, <laughs> it goes to very strange places when these things happen. And the first thing I thought of was, you know, I'm being abducted or it's a, an alien abduction or it might be something demonic or evil. Like it just did not feel good. 
that this thing was happening to me. And it continued to happen for months and months. And I was getting quite upset and quite angry because um, it was messing up my life. I was having very bad sleeps and I couldn't work uh, properly. I was falling asleep during the day. And one night when this was happening, um, I couldn't take it anymore. I, like I really wanted this to stop. And I was shaking myself violently inside my body to try to, you know, shake myself awake. And I shook so hard that I actually popped myself out of my body. So I would say that would my, be my first conscious outer body experience in my adult life. And I actually came out of my body. I could see myself laying in the bed. And standing at the foot of the bed was um, a very tall being. It was the only way I could describe it. It was um, probably about eight foot tall. Uh, it looked like a giant shadow. You know, the first thing my mind thought was <laughs> I was dead. Like I just died. And that was the Grim Reaper. That's kind of what it looked like. So I was very scared, you know, thinking that one, I'm dead. And two, you know, oh no, I'm, I'm out of my body. Um, and I was so scared that I got sucked back into my body and I woke up. So it was the first instant where I knew that there was really something more than our third dimensional existence. That was like the first kind of step into an other dimension. Yeah, yeah, this is incredible. So, okay, um, now... Uh, you mentioned at the beginning as well that you always felt that uh, you remembered the life prior to this. Uh, you remembered the space. I call it home. Some people call it heaven. Others personify it with different names. You remember that space. Uh, had you spoken to like your parents about remembering that space as a young child as well? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the first, when I first learned how to talk, I would always tell my mother, aren't you happy that I chose you uh, to be my parents. And I don't, they never really understood where that was coming from. But I remember clearly um, being able to view my parents pre-birth. I was able to um, kind of watch them, and I knew that I had chosen them. So I had this whole pre-birth memory of being somewhere else before I was physically incarnated. That's incredible. I mean, normally that veil is very, it's just there. You just don't remember, do you? Unless the, you use ways to go in through meditation or other, other ways. But that, that, that veil to be so thin on you, uh, that, that's, that's pretty incredible. Now, what was growing up like? Was it a pretty normal childhood? Were you a pretty normal kid? Because I say that because speaking off air with you, as I was having problems getting this interview running, uh, you seemed like a, just a pretty normal average person. I still think I am. <laughs> um, I, I really believe I had a perfectly normal childhood. Um, when, you know, when growing up, I did have a lot of experiences, I would say, with uh, ghosts or things in the house that other people couldn't see. Um, but I would say just completely normal because it didn't happen very often. It just happened here and there that I could remember. Um, plus a lot of it, you know, my parents would tell me they were just nightmares. Yeah. So you just kind of calm down and go back to sleep. So, you know, when you're older, it's, it's hard to try to sort through what was a spiritual experience and what was a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I would say that when I was 11 years old, I had this very pivotal, uh, pivotal, sorry, moment <laughs> and... Um, I remember uh, going to a new school and meeting new friends. And one friend in particular, when I started to get to know them, all these memories of a past life I had with them came back to me. And it was very emotional. It was a very traumatic life I had with this person. And so when I saw this person the day after these memories came back, I ran up to them and I said, you know, don't you remember who we were? And I started to tell him the whole story about our past life together. 
And, you know, he had no memory of it. And I remember as 11 years old, I would say to this, I said, don't you remember that I killed you in a past life? Oh, my gosh. So, and it was very traumatic for me. Like, um, most people that have spiritual experiences, they have, you know, they have amazing experiences. But with, for some reason, my spiritual experiences, um, a lot of them were very traumatic. Like, to remember past lives, to remember moments of death, to remember what I've done, which may not have been very nice. And I remember these things at a very early age. Um, I think one of my earliest memories was getting to see a past life where um, I think I was about three or four years old. So remember, this is a child's mind. And I got to go back and watch myself um, fight somebody to the death with my bare hands, which was very bloody, very gory, and something you would never even see in movies. So as a three- or four-year-old getting to experience that, for some reason, is just, I think it's part of this spiritual awakening or training where at a very early age, you're traumatized many times and you no longer fear death. You no longer fear fear. It's, it's hard to explain. And another thing as well, you know, maybe the veil's there for us to be able to have this experience we're having now. Otherwise, it's kind of game up in a sense. In some sense, it could be. Um, but with yourself, again, coming back to the veil not being there in a lot of respects. And um, why, why do you think you chose to have this life where you did remember aspects of yourself? I think that we predetermine our paths before we get here. And to um, keep us on the right path, certain things will happen to us along the way. So for example, let's say I have a completely normal childhood, and then at the age of 11, I have this spiritual experience which opens me up to past lives. And now I know that we have past lives, and that put me on another mindset. And then when I was ready to open up even more in when I was 22, then another big experience happened. Um, why, why am I like this? I, I don't have the answer. Um, I just think it has to do with the, the accumulation of past life experience. And what I've done before has determined my life path here. Um, yeah. And the most incredible thing, and this is what I think, Bob uh, found very fascinating about my story is that not all my past lives are human. So I have past life recall of, you know, being aliens on other planets. And I, I didn't even realize I was having past life memories of aliens on other planets. I thought I was leaving my body and going to visit other aliens on other planets. But then I realized after a while of doing this that I was actually viewing myself as this being yes. living this life. Um, Have you ever come, <laughs> come across uh, Dolores Cannon at all? And the material? I've heard that name, but yeah. I haven't really read. Okay. Well, yeah. well we, we, she took a lot of people under, thousands and thousands of people under regression, and they talked about having past lives on different planets as, as different beings. Uh, it's very fascinating what, you, what you're saying. It's sort of backing up a lot of what she, she wrote about as well. Very interesting. And there's bits I've sit, read of your book and actually that, that, that people have brought through in books that Dolores has done, which I found fascinating, and other people as well. Now, why this information is coming through yourself? Well, obviously, any book's a teaching book for others, isn't it? You know, um, And there's a lot of knowledge in this book, and there's a lot of knowledge probably in future books that you're going to do as well. Um, do, you, do you feel that you've got a gift to give other people, or do you think this gift is just for you? No, it's definitely to give other people. And... Remember, I was very sick growing up. I had a lot of uh, physical issues. Um, and I, I think one of the reasons why I was opened up so much is because I've been close to death many times. And doctors, they never helped me with anything. 
So it was almost like uh, my guides or spirits or even myself from the future <laughs> had to come back and teach me different healing techniques and guide me so that I could heal myself. That's very interesting what you're saying there. And I know you probably feel a bit stranger even discussing this sometimes because it's still like, is this really for real? Is this, is this true? This is my truth, but is it, am I feeding people bullshit? Right. Yeah, I, I get that from you. And, and all I can say to you is, no, you're not. This is your truth and you can't take that away. And, I, and, I, and I, the reason I say that is I'm channeling my own book. And I felt the same, felt the very much the same way when I've channeled, when I do channel. But the information that I'm hearing from you is stuff that's in this book that I'm writing. How future lives affect current incarnation, how past lives affect current incarnation, and how by healing the future and past, you can heal now. And by healing now, you can heal the future and past. I mean, I channeled this chapter. I, I can't even remember what's in there, right? But there's things that you're saying that I'm like, oh, hang on a minute. Uh, he's onto something there. Yeah, but that's yeah. that's the truth that I was uh, shown on the other side because once you leave your body, there's no such thing as time or space. So as I'm out of body, or even when I'm meditating or doing spiritual work in the physical body, I'm healing stuff in the past, I'm healing stuff in the in the future, and it's actually manifesting here in the physical, and you're creating a chain reaction, almost like a ripple effect through time and space. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yes, absolutely. Um, I'm just so this is this is incredible stuff, and I know there's so much we've got to get through as well. Um, thank you for what you've shared so far with us. By the way, how do your friends and family take what you're doing now? Um, my <laughs> my friends that I grew up with, we don't talk about this stuff. We keep it very simple, like what's on TV or movies or sports. <laughs> Um, family, I don't talk at all about this. Um, they wouldn't understand. Most of them wouldn't understand. Um, my mother knows about it and, and she's supporting me. But um, the only people that I've really opened up and talked to is, I would say, the people that have asked me to open up and talk about it. <laughs> That's so very honest with you. I really appreciate that answer. And I would say what you're doing here is meant for others. Um, and I think as long as you're true to yourself, I think your friends, the true friends will always be your friends. Do you know what I mean? I got the feeling that off air, you're very much this. I, I got the feeling that actually this is not talked about and that you just live what would be called a normal life in a sense, but you've not ignored this side. How, how hard was it to, to put this into publish, you know, you know to publish this work? I mean, was, was, it an, was it not an easy decision to come out in a sense with this information? Um, it was actually a, almost like a nightmare of mine <laughs> because, you know, you're going public and you're saying things that are very, um, out there and I have been following a lot of other authors and a lot of other people online and a lot of my stuff is very different than what they're saying um, so I really wanted to come out with I would say my own perspective to give another side to the story and like I said um, last year um, I was very ill and um, I basically was laying in bed in a very bad pain for about a month. I didn't eat and I was, I was basically blind and couldn't move. It was pretty awful what I went through. And I really thought long and hard about, you know, the things that I have stored up in me and nobody knows about them. Uh, so that really pushed me to write. I also thought that if I would write this book, it's almost like I'm purging these stories out of me for new things to come. And I thought if I wrote them, you know, I put it out there and I'll never have to go back there again and relive those things. And you know what? The strangest thing is that when we put this book out, like I was told spiritually that this book will do very good. And, you know, I just listened to that. But I did not expect how far reaching this book has gone. Like they're asking to publish it in Chinese and Japanese and 
uh, there's been so much interest in this book and we've been selling so much and yep. we've been basically doing radio shows for pretty much almost every day since the book has been released. Um, so it's almost like my fear has materialized. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're healing an aspect of yourself. You do know that, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you, that, you and do. I feel good about it because I actually get hundreds of emails now from people that tell me that um, what I went through is what they went through. Oh, there you go. So there's a lot of people out there that share very similar stories. There you go. There's part of the healing aspect of it as well. And, and much, much more than that. That's just one aspect of it. I mean, we're talking multidimensional here as well. Um, okay. Um, mm, wow. Okay. This is a, like, a, like I said at the beginning, I knew this was going to be fascinating, really fascinating. Um, where do we go from here? Okay. Well, just before we get into the story, uh, some of the stories as well, w could you say that um, if list viewers of this are coming across this for the first time um you would say that the procedure for you <laughs> there was one right now is you yeah. go to sleep and then this happens could you go go to the same place you you are entering via meditation in the sense where this is maybe what i would do um is go into meditation create a door walk through the door yeah and I've never been a good meditator, and that's, I think that's just my personality, um, but I, I'm very good at Qigong. I'm very good at Qigong, and I love it. I love doing Qigong. So my meditation practice is doing Qigong movements, and I've been doing it um, for quite a while, ever since this started, and I found that it was the Qigong that actually awakened this energetic side in my physical body because before that I was just having experiences when I go to sleep but now since I've been doing Qigong I could experience energy as I'm living in the physical body which is a, a huge breakthrough yeah and, and you and you don't know where that's gonna lead neither in the sense of does it always have to be you know through sleep where you do this or is there another way for you as well um, and Qigong may be that way. Um, it, you've heard of Edgar Casey, the sleeping prophet. He would go to sleep on books. He would wake up. He would know what was in the books. Um, this was a gift from childhood. Um, but also, he was able to go into these the different dimensional realms as well. Um, and I really, I, I do want to get into to, to the stories. And I, I'm not trying to just, you know, there's so much we could go into here as well. But there's almost like, would you feel when you go to these other dimensions that there's infinitive dimensions to go to? Yeah, and, you know, we have this very physical mind that says, you know, first dimension to 12th dimension, and that has never really felt right to me. Um, it was right when I left my body, it's almost like I had access to all. And... Um, it's almost like you travel through thoughts. So it's like if you think of being somewhere, you're immediately there. Um, and a portal will just open up and you get sucked right through it. And this is why, you know, there is a cautionary um, thing here when you leave your body. Is that when you leave your body, what you carry with you determines where you go. So... Um, I'll explain that a little further. You know, if you're carrying a lot of fear in you or a lot of hate or a lot of traumas, um, that actually will attract different multidimensional beings to you, which may not be nice. Um, and you may be taken to other places that you may not want to go. But the reason you're pulled to those places is because your energy in your mind is already resonating with those areas. Now, isn't that a bit like a near-death experience of someone that's had a near-death experience where they say they personify going to hell, but actually maybe it's not hell as they understand. There is no hell, but it's something more on the lines of what you've just described there. Yeah, yes, it is. Yes, it is. And um, I had to, um, I, I don't want to say, it. I had to deal with it for many years because you almost have to break through that. Um, and that comes through the whole healing aspect. Um, so... 
you know, if you go to sleep and then suddenly there's some type of astral being attacking you or you've brought something back with you in your body and something is trying to possess you, you know, these are all religious terms, but uh, this happens for real in, in these type of worlds. Um, I say, well, how did I attract this? What am I carrying that is pulling these energies towards me? And when I would find out what those were and I found out how to heal them, that experience is over. I never have to deal with that again. Wow, 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 wow. There is some levels to your work here. There really is. Um, it's almost, Now, there's so many books out there that say that there's this way or there's that way or sometimes a lot of the books will say the same thing. You're kind of describing something different here in a sense, and, and, I, and I like that because I, I tend to think that I think that our framework or our understanding of where we go to when we cross over is not the understanding that any book writes about, is not the understanding as far as we, we, we there's, a, there's a different framework at play that was not, that's not been talked about. That's right. And, you know, people ask me, what's it like to leave your body? And I'll say... Well, basically, you're dying. You're dead. That's what it feels like uh, to leave your body. And the first 500 times is very scary. After 500 times, it just becomes normal. <laughs> but um, you are a multidimensional being. That's what we all are. We're all multidimensional beings. We, are, we live within time and space, and we live outside of time and space. And as I'm living here and talking to you, I'm living infinite other lives and infinite other times. But we can't comprehend that because we have this separation put in place. Um, and frankly, that is a big blessing to have a separation put in place. It, it, it is. So would you say that a lot of these... Um beings that, that are, are visiting this planet potentially, that, that people talk about, are maybe future life aspects of the people that they come to visit and they're here to heal that aspect so in a case of abductions it's not abductions as we understand it yeah and that's another reason why Bob was uh, very drawn to me because I had a completely different explanation when it came to alien abductions and my experience and let's just say I would wake up in the middle of the night and there would be alien beings or what we would consider to be alien beings um, in the room and basically, they'd be working on me. And they're not doing experiments. It's not like the science project where they come down to, you know, see what makes a human tick. They're fixing my energetic structure. They're, they're doing something that has a positive effect in my life. What that is, I don't know. But I have had instances where a being would come to me to work on me. And I would get a sense that it, it's, it's just an other aspect of myself. Could be from the future, could be from the past. You know, I, um, I would just throw out the past and the future and just say, time is, there's no such thing as time. Everything is eternal. So this could be any aspect of my multidimensional self working on me. Yeah, now that makes more sense. So when it comes to, to you know hybridization or that genre in a sense, um, even that is probably not the understanding that we have of it. What if the hybrid program was in a sense to expand the understanding of the soul and to maybe bring about new versions of yourself in a sense for that soul to have new incarnations in different ways? What if you found out that there was beings that are much higher than us, I would say, uh, dimensionally, and they can go around the universe and they can see planets and they can see what type of planet it is and then they can see what type of life forms would do the best on this planet. And then they would seed those planets with those life forms. For I, I think that happened here as well. <laughs> and um, in one of my conversations with these beings, um, they were saying that some of these hybrid programs that we're experiencing here on Earth 
is that they are actually, um, well, well, first of all, the human being, I would say, is many different uh, strains of beings. You know, I'll just put that out there. We're, we're many alien beings in one, uh, genetically. And um, let's say there's another world out there, there's another planet, and there's a new colony that's being started up. And what, but you need different genetics to live there comfortably. So they will take our genetics and their genetics and they will create this new hybrid and then place them on these planets to start new colonies, to start new life. I have heard the bad things though too of the other programs, but there's always polarities in the universe. It's just one of the laws there is. Yes, yes. They, they, there's good and bad species, isn't there? There's the, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There has to be the the yin and the yang. I mean, you know, that's that's the nature of reality, isn't it? To be able to come here and, and as a consciousness, experience those myriad of 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 of, of lives, in a sense, I suppose. Um, how many um, how many different types of alien beings have visited you compared to uh, would you say? Um, spiritual beings or are they is there no difference really are we talking about the same thing I think we're talking about the same thing and I think that other beings have this perception and that's their truth for some reason we've separated you know spiritual paranormal alien um, religious and spiritual we've like separated all of these things and in reality we're all just one thing and it's mind experiencing the universe i like that mind experiencing the universe okay that's different okay yeah yeah okay um yes it's beyond it's it's beyond nuts and bolts this 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 is this much higher what you're talking about um do you find it difficult to put into words right now uh, i i'm there is no words for it because even the level that I perceive myself to be, I feel like I know nothing. Like really, <laughs> I don't know. It, there's so many other questions. There's so many things that I'd like to know and I'm sure it'll come in time when it's needed. Um, but for now, you know, when something comes to visit me, I don't have that feeling of separation anymore. I don't have that feeling of you're different or you're another species or you're negative or you're positive. It's almost like you're dead in the middle of it and everything happens when it has to happen. And, you know, I've met, and I know you're from, uh, from the UK and, you know, um, you have uh, David Icke over there. <laughs> Yes. Um, who talks about um, the reptilians. And I've heard so many uh, terrible things about that race. And I've been visited by that race too. And I'll say it was, it was not so nice. But I've also been visited by reptilians that are incredibly evolved and spiritually gifted. <laughs> so, like, like I say, there's always polarities. There's always polarities. Now that makes a lot of sense. I will say that. Um, do you think the veil is less for these beings? I think some of these beings, um, they're not even third dimensional. They have to, um, they would have to manifest their energy in a third dimensional form to be here. And this is what I found so fascinating about the whole abduction uh, scenarios is that most people when they talk about being abducted they're in bed they're sleeping they feel a paralysis and suddenly they're taken up through their roof and experiments are done on them and they get put back now most of these people would be sleeping next to uh, their husband or wife or there's children there and none of them will experience that person leaving the bed. So how are they leaving? I would say that a lot of these cases are dimensional abductions. 
they're taking your energy, they're taking your astral body to these places. And I'll just say that being in an astral body is literally like being in your physical body. It's very hard to distinguish uh, the differences. So you can have an experience and you may think it's entirely physical when it could be an extra dimensional experience. But because we're not taught about that, we have no way of even saying that this is, you know, I love how psychiatrists will say, oh, it's all in your head. And I'll say, yes, everything is in your head. You're absolutely right. <laughs> but most people don't want to hear that response. <laughs> no. Well, it, it, the, the information you're given here is almost like it's beyond the current understanding of mankind. I hope so. So we, so we all have to catch up. <laughs> mm. Mm. And I think we're given information when we're ready. And I think the information that's coming through you right now is because we're ready. Even though some of it has come through others, it still needs to come through again, and it will probably come through others again. But, you know, it's, I, I think uh, it's kind of cutting edge, um, some of the stuff that you've, that, that, that you've experienced. Um, and you're still quite young as well. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm 34. Yeah, that's still so quite young. I, I guess okay. I'm still quite young. <laughs> I feel like I've been doing this for quite a long time. I feel like I've had many lives in this life already. But, um, yeah, like, what I just want to say is that we have this misconception of what reality is. And it's basically been indoctrinated into us for thousands of years. And we've lost touch with our true nature. And, you know, I'm from Canada. I don't know what you have in the UK, but... You know, we have the Native Canadians, Native Americans, and um, they've had this way of life for thousands of years. And it's only recently that, you know, the Europeans have come and taken that away. But there's many people that have kept those ancient traditions. And if I were to talk the way I'm talking to you to them, it's almost like I'm speaking their ancient language. So it's not something that's new. This is just something that we've, through generations, have lost these ideas. Yes, yes, completely, absolutely. And, you know, uh, I always think to myself, if it's not in this lifetime, you're going to get it. There's many more lifetimes, and you will get it in the end. So when, when I see a lot of people in pain, in um, difficult circumstances, or, you know, they're just... They won't consider anything else but this, re you know, but this reality of science. Um, yeah, when we can't answer what's beyond the universe, beyond infinity, which we can't, um, all bets are off for me personally. Um, there was something that came to me recently that that we are we are in the everything because I, I I I was putting the question out in my head, you know, what's beyond the universe, and is, is that where you know the the me metaphysical starts in a sense, but then the answer that came back to me is where we are already in the everything. Right, and you know, well, I started to do a healing practice, and um, a lot of people had questions about death, and many people are very fearful about death. And from my perspective. It was very different. It was a very different idea of what death, death is. And so when people would talk about their fear about it, I could understand what their fear was. But I would ask them a simple question. I said, what if you learned that you never left heaven? You know, people think you're dying and you're going somewhere. When you die and go somewhere, you realize it's all this. It's all just one thing. I always think that. I think, am I, is it, am I already in heaven? Is this just the illusion that it's not? It's, That's it's, right. So. It's funny. I was walking past this kid and his mum, and he was, this kid was, was saying to his mum, oh, mummy, uh, heaven's up there, isn't it? And I was thinking when he said I was like, no, actually, heaven's here. <laughs> right. So, and it takes a very special eye to see it that it's actually real and it's manifest here all the time. 
but you're the person that can see it. You're the person that's manifesting it um, because you have to experience it. Like if I'm experiencing that um, ecstasy or, or divine nature or that godlike presence, if I'm experiencing that and I'm in a physical body, how do I portray that to another human being who is not experiencing that at that current time in their life? It's impossible. <laughs> It'd probably lock me up and throw away the key. <laughs> well, maybe hundreds of years ago, but not nowadays. Nowadays, people are thirsty for the knowledge that you bring forth right now, as you've known from the sales of the books as well. And I, and I, I can imagine for Bob, this must have been really different in the sense that there's a nuts and bolts guy in, in one sense, you know, in documentation of sightings and everything else, yet around him is you, and it's it's beyond that. It's beyond anything that he's ever sort of been exposed to as someone that he feels very that's emitting truth. And yeah. you're you're saying that actually it's all about the consciousness, the UFO, the whole, that whole thing. It, it's 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 an enigma in a sense. It's you know even they're looking for consciousness and what the meaning is of their existence, and that's why that's, they're here. That's correct. And um, the beautiful thing about Bob is that he had all these points of views from speaking to all these uh, experiencers and cases. And he's written, I think, three or four books before he met me about this subject. That's right. So he really had a basis of um, what he believed. And when he met me, everything that he thought he knew, he basically forgot about it. He dropped it away and he said, you know, what I'm saying makes so much more sense um, so I've, I've taken him <laughs> light years ahead of where he was thinking a year ago. And, um, you were meant, we to, you were meant to meet though. You were meant to meet. Yeah, we were definitely meant to meet. And like I said, the universe, when I made that decision, I said, I'm going to tell my story. There was Bob shaking my hand. It was almost immediately the universe brought us together. <laughs> incredible. Incredible. Now, now, um, Okay, let's just get into. Oh, sorry, just one other quick question: Are you still yeah. able to? Are you still going to sleep and and having these uh, out of body experiences? Not as much as I did in the past. Okay. Um. Right now, I enjoy sleeping. <laughs> that, I don't blame you. I don't, but could you call it forth if you wanted to? Oh yeah. yeah I thought so. Yeah. Uh, I sometimes I just practice just to stay tuned up. Um, the best time I find to leave the body is, um, you know the time when you wake up too early? Yes. It's like you look at the clock and you're like, oh, it's four or five in the morning. Yes, you're right. And, and you can go to sleep instantly. You can just put your head back on the pillow and you're out. That is the best time to leave your body because it's like your body is already basically asleep. So I put my body back to sleep, but my mind is still active, and I just push myself out. Do you think we all have the ability to do what you can do? I think we all have the ability. And it's just a muscle that we've never learned to use. And it's the same thing with uh, Qigong, uh, your Tai Chi. Um, you're doing a martial art of moving energy through your body. And that's another muscle that we've totally forgot we even have. And when you start to strengthen these muscles, the, I'll call them the spiritual or energetic muscles, suddenly we can broaden our experiences. Things may start to happen. Yes, you're, you're very, very right. And I think, you know, for anyone that's listening to that as well, practice makes perfect. So you can't expect just to go in the first time. You've got to practice, 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 practice. Yes. They don't call it a spiritual practice for nothing. You, know, you have to do it. <laughs> that is very true. You've got to walk it as well. Now, I'm very, I feel very guilty here that I've got up to 46 minutes and I've not even talked about some of the experiences that you have. I do apologize for that. I just wanted to do what maybe some others haven't and really go into the spiritual side of it as well because I think that's so, yeah. so very important, what the, the story and your story you, you, that, that you've got to tell. I'm, I'm so glad you've shared some of, the, some of the bits with us and I know there's bits we've missed out as well. Now, just going on to some of the experiences and... There's so many more documented in the book, of course. Yes, um, yes. So, for example, um, an apocalyptic future. 
You saw an apocalyptic future. Now, was this a potential future? Was it another Earth, parallel Earth, somewhere else having this apocalyptic future? Or could we head down the same road if we're not careful? All of those are correct. So, um, it's already happened. Many of, We've already lived through many uh, visions like that. Um, the human race is heading down that path right now. And this is why there's so many people being awakened and coming forward with new information. Um, because if we don't awaken, you know, we're going to destroy this earth. And we may pass that line where we can't reverse it. So there is something going on here where there's a desperate plea from many beings throughout the universe and other dimensions to come to Earth and incarnate in physical bodies to forget who they are and forget what they know so they can be here at this time to possibly help shift the consciousness of the human race so that we could, uh, you know, instead of looking at economy, maybe we can look at the environment. Um, I was always, like, when I first saw these visions of these futures, or when I was taken on these journeys into the future, um, I really thought that this was going to happen in our future. But what I came to learn is that um, it's through this healing process. We have to individually go through our own healing processes and let go of these energies so we don't carry them forward because it's the things that we carry that is actually manifesting our future. So it's not as simple as healing the environment or, you know, getting a, a just politician, which is not ever going to happen. Um, the, the disease is what we carry. We carry hate, we carry fear, we carry judgment, we carry all these things within us and we project it out into our world. And until we take care of that, our world is going to continue down the same path. Because we're actually collectively creating our future together. We're co and that's being done by our energetic fields. And, and isn't it crazy that, well not crazy, no, sorry, that's the wrong word. Isn't it, it's almost like it's allowed as well. We're allowed to go down that road with complete free will to destroy ourselves. Because yeah. and the in the underlying nature of it all, we will not destroy our consciousness, but we can experience it on a on an unconscious level of destruction. But then they, again, they do care enough because they come through you to pass the message on to say, "Hey, look, it doesn't need to be so painful. You're doing yeah. it the most painful way." That's right. It comes through thousands of us. Um, even yourself, you're channeling these things, but. You have to remember the universe is very large, and I'll say it's timeless. And there have been many civilizations on many planets that have been in the exact same place as us, and they've either destroyed themselves and their environment completely, or they've realized and changed themselves in the environment. And it goes both ways. So that's kind of the free will that people talking about, but they don't understand that the free will is what we carry. You have to be responsible for the things that you carry. So if you have these old wounds or you won't, uh, or you're holding on to the past or all these things, what you're really doing is you're saying, I'm going to pull this energy forward and project it in the future to be manifest again. And that's so true, as in to what you said as well, in the sense that with these wounds that we carry, that we don't heal sometimes, or even... You know, we, we take them with us when we cross over. Um, we, we are he, we're, those wounds are carrying on into past lives, into future lives, maybe. Mm -hmm. Most Absolutely. definitely, you know. There are the, uh, well, I say carrying on. I think there's free will in the future, but what I'm saying is that y y it's affecting the, the that, that 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 line in a sense, past, present, and future. What happens now? I guess that's what I'm trying to say, maybe. Yeah, and that's a very scary concept to most people because, you know, people 
they they want to be safe. They want people to take care of them. That's why we have governments and police and military. And um, when you say you're responsible for everything, you're responsible for your consciousness. You're responsible for your energy. Um, most people will try to avoid that at any cost. Because, and I'll just have to say this: that we don't understand who we are. And we are extremely powerful beings beyond the physical body. And we could bring that energy and manifest it here. And that is quite a responsibility to, um, I don't even want to say wield that power because it's not power. It's just who you are naturally. It's just who you are. Yes. So you're just becoming who you are, but who you are is so scary to a normal person that they don't even want to think that that is possible. How are you carrying that energy into day-to-day -day living now? I would just say it's a knowing. It's just a knowing. I have, and, and I think this is where this whole concept of faith comes in, where I don't worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. I know I'm going to be provided for if um, if there's information that I need I know that I will receive it so there's no even real thoughts about any of this all I know is that if you're on the right path and you're being true to who you are it's almost like the road opens up and it's it's a very comfortable uh, walk down that road that's a that's a beautiful place that you're in right now that's 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 a place that I think a lot of people um, would like to experience and and do touch upon sometimes that 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 surrendering to present moment is is that a message that comes through again and again would you say what you've just said there yeah and um, you know I experience things like that so often like I said with Bob it's like I wanted that or I thought okay I'm going to do this and suddenly Bob is there and I like telling this story because it's such a simple story. Um, I was in Japan um, last year and um, I did a talk and someone left their umbrella in my class. So the, someone said, just take the umbrella. They may see you a couple days from now. So I took the umbrella back to the, the hotel and the next day I had to walk a good mile and I looked outside and it was just pouring rain outside and I go oh my god I can't walk I'm gonna be soaked and I look next to me and there's the umbrella you know and I was laughing because it's like I didn't know I had no clue that it would be raining the next day but yet suddenly I had an umbrella in my hand <laughs> it's good and, and you know for the way you're describing it you're not um trying to tear it apart too much on how it works you're just doing it that's the difference you know not trying to analyze it bit by bit like some books do just you have the power choose what you want it will happen yeah. or the next best thing for you will come along that's right but i have to say that um healing is painful you know going through these things does take tolls on you um, but and what uh, my shaman who taught me uh, said something very profound that um, he said the only reason you're experiencing this I'll say hiccup in life is because now you're strong enough to deal with it it's true. It's he said true. it would never happen unless you were ready to beat it. How, how much of yourself in this process have you healed? Do you think it, it hard to tell? I, I would say, I would say healing is never over. And, um, you know, we have a very, um, that's good. I like that. I don't think we have the right definition for what healing is. And I think it's a perpetual work 
to evolve your consciousness. And that's what healing is. Oh, you are full of knowledge, aren't you? Yes, yes, I think you're right there. <laughs> I, I have not heard it. Of of this is in the book either, so you can imagine what's in the book. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. We're not, we're not. That's the thing, guys. We're not really. We, we haven't really touched on the book too much. This is just knowledge that you've gathered from what, as you could say, has been put in the book, and it's your mm -hmm. discernment of it as well. Um, <laughs> incredible. Okay. Um, you did go to future timelines, though. Let's just let's just go there. Yeah. What? Yeah, how, how, the yeah. How far in the future did you go, and what kind of society did you see? See that, that that's a big problem because a lot of these places that I've gone to in the future are so um, futuristic that I don't even. My first thought is this is not Earth. I'm on another planet. Um, there was one instance where I was told that um, I, I went to a place in the year 2700 um, and they were showing me this place um, astrally so I wasn't there physically I was kind of just flying around with uh, a guide in my ear uh, explaining what I'm seeing and uh, the first thing was um, they said this society took place after a historical war between two races of beings over Earth. So this is very much in our future. <laughs> and they showed me one of these beings, and it looked like an ant man. That's the best way I could describe it. It was like a, a very dark colored, um, almost like a burgundy gray skin. Uh, and it literally looked like a, a humanoid ant. Uh, almost. So I saw that and then they were showing me that this being was responsible for building um, these step pyramids, these ancient step pyramids that we we used to see or we still see. Um, so they are saying after this war um, it was decided that there would be no government. Instead uh, the people will be ruled by um, this artificial intelligence and um, it was actually really interesting because when I was there, I thought it was the coolest thing. <laughs> it was very advanced. Um, the cities were very clean. I would say everything looked like an Apple store, like everything was like windows and white and uh, very nicely lit. And um, this interface, this AI was in everything. Every technology had this interface and it was even in the buildings. And it was in your mind. So you were like telepathic with everybody, but you were also telepathic with the buildings. So I found it really fun where you walk into a building and you can have a conversation in your mind with the building. So it was... <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it was a very strange thing. And then when I came back, I thought, this was like amazing. This was... It was such a... Um, technically advanced civilization but when I started to think about this uh, artificial intelligence that was basically in everything um, I kind of got the hint that maybe that's not a good path to go down <laughs> but like I say these are just experiences you're experiencing what your mind can create I guess I, and again, you know, you know to, to, for, I've never heard of that before, not in any book, about uh, the ability to consciously, you know, talk to a building because, you know, it, it's not a normal building. It's probably more fibers than you can imagine inside their fiber optic cables, and it's probably um, a, a, a different type of technology that's put it together. And it, that, yeah, that, but the building is conscious. Yeah, uh, yeah. incredible, incredible stuff. Um, wow. Okay, there, there was one other as well that I wanted to speak about, the spider's web. Now, I know you've mentioned this maybe on some other shows, be, um, yeah. but uh, I found this one fascinating when I read it. Okay. Um, I found it fascinating when I heard it too. <laughs> and uh, because, remember, I, I don't really know any of this stuff. Um, it's kind of just shared to me, and then I have to kind of do my own research and see it and experience it for myself. 
Um, so basically one night uh, a being came to me. It was around uh, four or five foot tall and it was wearing a brown robe. You couldn't see its face. It was just like a shadow. Um, but it was a very high being. Um, like I could feel its frequency. It was a very advanced being. And it asked me if I wanted to know my past lives. And at first I was hesitant, but eventually I said yes. And um, they revealed some things. They showed me some lives and told me some lives. But then they told me a story. And this is the story of the spider's web. And so what this being said to me was that eons and eons ago, there was a very advanced civilization. Um, now, I'm going to use a name that people use on Earth, but it's not the, their actual name. So they call these beings um, the builders. We'll call them the builders. <laughs> and um, they became so advanced that they created uh, a network. Uh, it's an etheric dimensional network of portals, and they placed it throughout time and space. So they connected it to every planet, every system, not just in this universe. What I was shown is that it was connected to seven universes, if that makes any sense. I don't know. <laughs> so this web goes through seven universes, all the dimensions. And basically, um, there are advanced species, I would say they're just a little more advanced than us, that when they go to sleep at night, they don't dream, they just leave their bodies. Okay, so most of their experience is not physical, it's actually spiritual. So when these beings go to sleep and put their bodies to sleep, they can leave their body and travel through these spider webs. And they can visit friends and family and civilizations anywhere they want. And then I was told that these beings who created the spider web, um, they ascended, I would say, billions of years ago. <laughs> They're no longer in this universe. But there was another advanced species that came to be. And they found the spider's web. And they figured out a way to sever the spider's web. And they decided that it would be in their best interests to sever different systems so that they can take full control over those systems themselves. And then this being said, um, the name of those beings is what we refer to as reptilians. Right? So, like I've never really heard of these names before, but and most people have heard of them. And then they said that there are many beings throughout the universe and in different dimensions that have decided to incarnate on these systems that have been taken over and severed to help reconnect the, the planets, the solar systems, and the people back to these spider webs so they can free themselves consciously and once again, when they go to sleep, they can leave their bodies and travel these worlds. And like, I'll just explain what it looks like. <laughs> okay, so I leave my body. Now I'm in the astral state or outer body. And suddenly a portal will open up. So you'll see like a wormhole. It'll be like this black uh, wormhole open up and you'll see it. And it pulls you, so you actually feel the pull, and you it's like you're traveling just like in Stargate. But it doesn't look like that. It's uh it's very dark and it sounds like um it sounds like a like wind or white noise. Uh and you feel like you're going an incredible distance. And when you come out of these portals, you're either in outer space or you're in uh, another planet. Wow. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and when you have an experience like that, um, would you go to another planet or would you just wake up or? Most of the times you just wake up. Yeah, you but you knew, 
you knew what had happened there. It was almost like there was a telepathic link to yourself, describing to yourself what you was experiencing in a way. So your, your voice telling you, do you know what I mean? Um, sometimes it's a complete memory blackout. Oh, right. So you don't remember anything. And the odd time, you experience it in its entirety, fully conscious and aware. Oh, my gosh. Right. Okay. That must be an amazing experience. But then again, let's just remind people of this. You've done this so many times as well. This is not just the first time. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you... I say the first 500 times is very scary. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Um, okay. Now, I know we're completely um, um, over time here as well. Um, okay. There, there were some other great ones that you got to. Um, I, I mean, Atlantis, the untold story. That sounds like a fascinating <laughs> one as well. Um, but I, I just don't think we've got the time right now to. Well, you're, we've done radio shows that are three hours long. Yeah. And we don't touch anything. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. So, so we did, we did real good. Yeah. I, the I, amount of time I, that we. I did. hope so. I hope so. I really let, let's. I mean, look, the the, the book has twenty eight chapters, and it's yeah. just packed full of, of of different experiences like this. Um, let's just rewind this back to present moment, in a sense. Yeah. What has, what we okay? What has all this taught you about living your life? And how important this incarnation is right now, because all all this is taking takes us away. But this information has also brought you back to yourself, hasn't it? And about yeah. how important this magnificent life is that we're living right now. Um, basically, uh, that's a very tough question. It's basically it has to do with perception. Like it really has to do with perception because. I'm still living in the physical world. Um, I have a day-to-day -day job. I mean, I've been working on banners and advertisements and magazines <laughs> all day before I spoke to you. Because that keeps you grounded. If you were to do all this work and only this work, you wouldn't. Be, what's the point of being here? Right. So I have a very physical task to do, and that physical task um, is connecting me to... Um, many other uh, people that I need to meet and then you know speaking to you and doing the YouTube and the radio is it's reaching a very wide audience and um, and you know I would just say that I'm still learning I'm still trying to figure it out and you know it's not an easy one to put in words. I completely understand. You, you've yeah. done amazing in this interview. I just want to say that. I know you've done a lot, um, but, but I, I really take my hat off to you. And I want you to know that you're loved by a lot of people for the information that you're bringing out. So in your dark days when you, you know, think of wanting to give up with what you're doing, do not. Know that there's lives you're touching that you'll never quite know who they are sometimes, but you are. And I very do much believe with yourself there's a lot more information to come through. This this is not over for you. Do you get that feeling? Oh, it's, it's not over. I'm still very young. And because I work a lot in the astral, um, I've been told how long I'll be working here. And I still have a long way to go. <laughs> good, good. I feel there's I feel there's other work for you to do yet. Do you know that? I really do get that deep, deep feeling with yourself that this is just the beginning. And for you to have the understanding that you've got, you've gone deeper than what most researchers, even that went deep, deeper than most people that I know, you've gone deeper. And that's great to see that because I think we're ready for that. I really do. So thank I you. Just hope, I just hope people could experience these things I'm talking about because it's one thing for me to tell a story and you know most people will read the book and say wow that was like a really awesome sci-fi book you know but I want to get people uh, shifting themselves so that they could experience those things because I don't think it's an extra sensory experience I believe what I do and what I am is entirely a human experience. Well, what if 
some aspect of you in the future is picking up your book now <laughs> and it's re-remembering that, 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 that this aspect of you now is like, hey, that was me. <laughs> I wrote this book to remind myself. <laughs> I'm just saying, do you know what, that, 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 when you look at it from, the, from a bigger perspective, there's so much that's possible here. Um, but um, what would, is there any final message, message that you might like to give the audience? Um, you know, there's always new information um, I'm always doing new and different things. In fact, me and Bob are working on a new book right now. Um, it's not about my story. It's about somebody else, somebody else's story that's a very uh, interesting, interesting person. And it's not so much spiritual as it is physical. So this book, uh, Forbidden Knowledge, I put the poster there. <laughs> uh, this this uh, Forbidden Knowledge is very spiritual, very mystical. And it really opens you up to a lot of spiritual concepts. Um, whereas this book is very much in the physical present world. Um, so I think those polarities are very much needed. As I just said to you, absol uh, absolutely. And your website as well, Jason? Yes, it's uh, thecrystalsun.com. That's thecrystalsun.com. And I have... Um, my Qigong on there, I teach Egyptian postures, I have many different, uh, see I'm even holding a crystal while I'm talking to you. <laughs> That's I have many different crystals and uh, fun things on the website. And uh, this weekend we're doing a Tesla Electric Festival in Hamilton, Ontario. And we're, they're naming a street after Nikola Tesla, which I think is quite an amazing shift in the right direction. Absolutely fantastic. Well, I know Bob's going to be there, is he? I believe he is with you. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah. Okay, we've been putting Bob's books on the screen as well and his yeah. website. Well, Jason Quit, I'd just like to say it's been such a pleasure. I think this has been an interview that I've enjoyed the most just recently. Thank you for coming on to be that person. Thank you for having me, and I'm sure I'll be on again. Most definitely. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, we've come to an end on tonight's show. Don't forget that you can listen and watch all our past interviews on the More Show's official YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new daily shows. You may also find out more on all past and upcoming guests on the show via themoreshow.co.uk and do like us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates. So until next time, be safe.